and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go through a paired samples t-test. So you've seen one sample t-test, you've seen independent sample t-test, now we're going to do the paired samples t-test module on Jamovi. Now I'm using, as always, the latest uh, feature build of Jamovi version 1.6.3, although the stable version of 1.2.27 2.27 is also available for all platforms and uh, here I'm doing it on Mac OS. All right, so let's open up some data and I'll, we'll come back to it. Well, here we have some data. Now, I, uh, this data is about a decade old. It's from an old back masking experiment that I did in um, the early days of graduate school. That was kind of fun. Uh, so, Let's do a simple, simple one of these with paired samples t-tests, okay? So how you do paired samples t-test is just like the other t-tests, you go up to t-test here and you click on paired samples t-test. It'll bring up the module and you're gonna put in your paired variables in this box and then we'll go through each of these, these uh, options here. And you can see that, um, we have included uh, our, our initial table is ready to go. And then down here is the references for the Jamovi project and the R core team. Now you can turn this on or off depending on um, uh, what you want in your results section. So you can go over here to the three dots and you can uh, say that you want those on or you don't want them on. So you can go to visible or hidden for references. All right. So. What I'm going to do for this paired samples t-test is I'm going to use what uh, what was actually a paired manipulation, which was congruent uh, conditions versus incongruent conditions or trials uh, of different backmasked music. And so it was the job of the participant to put those uh, put messages to those. And so there were congruent messages and there were incongruent messages. Uh, and then there was a no expectation condition, and I might actually use this uh, situation here for my one-way ANOVA, which will be uh, in the next video. So let's do concurrent, and you can see what it does when I put that one over there. It puts this thin line, and you can see that it only accepts the continuous... Uh, scale variable here and then so I'm going to do incongruent and it's basically just going to put make the make that a pair okay and so it's it's going to compare congruent condition versus the incongruent condition you can s sort of uh, have an unstated minus sign in the middle there and I could do as many pairs as I want to in this window here I'm only going to keep it simple. I'm only going to do congruent versus incongruent, and we're going to get this paired samples t-test. So we already get information about students t and the test statistic uh, for t, and you can see that, uh, ooh, there was not a lot of good stuff coming out uh, of this one there. Essentially the same with that t being very close to zero, 54 degrees of freedom, and 0.981 p-value. So that's almost uh, that's almost uh, the same number here. Definitely not going to reject the null. Uh, as always with this, we can get the Bayes factor. If we have a prior probability that we, we know, I'm going to skip that one. I am not a Bayesian uh, statistician, so definitely not going to do that. But we can also get our non-parametric Wilcoxon rank test uh, here, which is what I have done, uh, 13 pairs uh, of values were tied. So you can see that that kind of uh, information tells you what Wilcox and Rank is doing. And so it's comparing the, the values back and forth in 13. Uh, one was not bigger than the other. And so we get a W statistic 432. And then the RP value associated with 432 on the W distribution. So, you know, not the greatest. Uh, down here, uh, hypothesis, as always, by default, it is the two-tailed, just uh, that our pairs are not equal to each other. Our paired, our paired samples are not equal to each other, so that's going to look at both sides, more conservative. Uh, but then we can have a directional hypothesis here. We can say that uh, 
incongruent as measure one is going to have greater values on this scale than incongruent, or we could say that the opposite, congruent is going to be lower on this scale than incongruent. And um, you can use one of those directional hypotheses. And what that'll do is it'll basically cut p value in the p value in half, depending on um, which one you choose. Uh, so we could do measure one, and so that cut it in half, and then measure two, it cut it in half in a different direction. Okay, so it's about half. Missing values, uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, includes ca uh, cases, analysis by analysis. So that's how many uh, pairs that I have in this box here. If there's a missing value in any of those pairs, it will only exclude it from this set of paired variables so if it's not missing anywhere if 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 you have another pair where there is no missing it's not going to take that case out of that pair so if i had congruent versus no uh, no expectation in this as well and i had a missing value in congruent it would take it out of those two but if i did incongruent and no expectation incongruent and no expectation and there was no missing values in incongruent and no expectation then then those that case would not be excluded exclude cases list wise is the entire case if there's a missing value in any of these analyses it's going to get kicked out there okay so um leave it by default on analysis by analysis it is my is my best uh, suggestion there. We can also get the mean difference. Okay, so mean difference comes up here. You can see that it's very small, ten to the negative four, uh, and then we get a standard error for that difference. We can also get a confidence interval. Oh, and because I've left it on um, a directional hypothesis, I do not get an upper value there. And this would be the case if um, I left it on the less than. So we're going to bring it back up to this, and so we get an upper upper and lower bound for our confidence interval. Um, we can get an effect size. So this is Cohen's D for T and rank by serial correlation for W. And you can see that it is a very small number, very, very small number. And we can get a confidence interval for that effect size as well. Um, in both, uh, all three of these are inclusive of zero. And so that's not good. Uh, we can get our descriptives here. So uh, how many people are in each group, what the means on the scale is. I think this was like proportion correct. And so we have a 20, a point 205 and 0 0.206, so about 20% accuracy on these. Median, standard deviations, and standard errors. And we can get our descriptive plots. Again, this is just a mean median plot for each of my conditions. And so where the mean is with 95% confidence interval bars, and then where the median is in each case. We can also get our assumption checks. So we are testing for normality here. So then the Shapiro-Wilk test comes up and lets us know if we have a problem. Doesn't look like we do have a problem. Although uh, J JASP and Jamovi uh, consider anything less than 0.05 an issue. I was uh, taught to use the use an alpha of, of 0.001 or 0.01 to be more conservative to reject um, our normality test because normal uh, violations of normality are fairly robust and if we put up the QQ plot we can probably see that now there is some deviation from this central line here but and and some some clustering around the middle section of this at the negative uh, one zero to negative one quantile but that's pretty good I wouldn't consider that to be an issue with normality just just going out and saying that. So that is a paired samples t-test in Jamovi. If you like this content, please leave a like. If you enjoy this content and other content on my channel, please consider subscribing. Please leave your comments and feedback down below. Thank you for watching.